So we're going to talk about the transport of sperm. And I just mean how it gets transported out of the male reproductive tract and into the female reproductive tract where it can hopefully fertilize an egg and result in a pregnancy. And so to do this, we're going to first look at a sagittal view of the male reproductive system. And, and I'll just show you what a sagittal view is. Basically, it's if we were to look at this blue guy over here, and if we said this is his left side and this is his right side, uh, we, would, we would make a cut down his midline, like so, and we would sort of cut away everything on one of his sides. And in this case, we're going to cut away everything on his left side, and then we're going to look. Here's an eye here. We're going to sort of look at his, his right side, at this cut surface on the right side here. And so when we do that, we find that we see something, something like that. And so this is what we call a sagittal view. And just to remind you, this would be his right leg. And so the bottom line is that sperm needs to be transported out of our bodies. And so we do that in males via a two-step process. And the first step is called erection. An erection is, is basically when the penis goes from having very little blood within its core, a state called flaccidity, and, and I'll write that out, to a state where it's filled with blood. And we call that an erection, when it's filled with blood. And the second step in our two-step process is called ejaculation. And so ejaculation is basically the expulsion of sperm out of the reproductive tract. So let's go into the mechanisms of how this happens. But before we talk about how an erection happens, let's, let's briefly discuss why an erection happens. Actually, let's just clear off some of this stuff here. So believe it or not, an erection actually starts in your brain. And so here we have a brain. And so when you're physically or mentally sexually stimulated by sights or sounds or, or smells or even thoughts, your brain sends signals to your penis and it can cause an erection. So it does that by sending signals to the blood vessels in the penis and those signals cause those blood vessels to open up and allow blood into the penis. So it's this filling of the penis with blood which results in an erection. And we'll expand on that in a moment. But first we'll talk about some regional anatomy of the penis. So the base of the penis here, that's called the base or the root. This area here is known as the body. And this area here is called the head or the glands. And so what we'll do next is look at a more detailed view of the anatomy of the inside of the penis. The best way to visualize that is if we did something called a transverse view. Transverse view is basically a cut that goes this way across the penis. We'll put our little eye here and we'll look up at this cut surface here. And so when we do that, you'll find that it looks something like this. And so again, this is called a transverse view. So just to orient you, this transverse view is of two different penises side by side. So the one on the left is a flaccid penis. It's not filled with blood. And you can tell because it's got a lot more visible blue veins, which you don't see in erection. And over on the right, we have an engorged erect penis. And you can see the veins have sort of been compressed to the sides. So that one's erect. And I'll explain all that in a minute. So in this view, it's quite easy to see the three cylindrical vascular compartments that get filled with blood during an erection. And so these vascular compartments or chambers are called the corpora cavernosae. And you have two of those, one on each side here and the corpus spongiosum, which you have down here. By the way, this is the bottom of the penis, the underside, and this is the top of the penis. And also this structure here in the center, this tube, is the urethra. So blood normally flows into these vascular chambers via both dorsal arteries and cavernosal arteries. So, so here's a dorsal artery, and here's a cavernosal artery here. 
And so when the penis is filling with blood, blood actually drains out, it leaks out of these cavernosal arteries and into these purple circles that you see called lacunar spaces. And these lacunar spaces run the, the entire length of these vascular chambers. So there are a lot of spaces there for blood to leak out into, and that's what causes the penis to get engorged. And blood is normally drained out of these chambers by veins with the same name. So dorsal veins and cavernous veins. But under normal conditions, i.e. when you do not have an erection, the, the blood flow into the penis equals the blood flow out of the penis. So there's no actual net change in erection status. And let's just label these here. This, this one on the left here is flaccid. And this one over here on the right is erect. And the reason why the one on the left is flaccid is because it has arterioles that are constricted. And these red arterioles, when they're constricted, they don't actually allow much blood into the penis. But over here on the right, the erect penis is sexually excited. And so you can see visually that the arterioles on this side are much more dilated, that is they let in a lot more blood and thus can, can cause an erection. And so what's keeping this penis flaccid? What is keeping these arterioles from opening up? Well, it turns out that it has to do with your brain. And so normally little chemical signals from the brain called norepinephrine cause the arterioles to stay constricted. And so we can see a neuron here leaving the spinal cord and sort of sending a signal to the arteriole to keep it small. By the way, a neuron is a cell of the nervous system responsible for sending messages. But over on the other side, on the erect side, there's another neuron, actually a different type of neuron, that actually sends a different signal to the arterioles and results in them opening up and allowing blood into the penis. And so the signal that this neuron is sending, it's called norepinephrine. And what norepinephrine is, it's a little chemical signal from a division of the nervous system called the sympathetic nervous system, or the SNS. And that'll become important later on. And the signal that this neuron is sending is NO, or nitric oxide. And this neuron is actually from a division of the nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system, or the PSNS. And so as these arterioles dilate and allow lots of blood into these, into these sinuses here, they actually fill so much that they push outward against the edges and compress the venous drainage of the penis. And that basically prohibits flaccidity, thus it results in an erection. And just to be complete, an erection is reversed when the inflow of blood is stopped and then the veins are then allowed to open up and allow the blood back out of the sinuses. And then you go flaccid again. And that might happen when the nitric oxide from those green parasympathetic neurons stop being produced. And one last thing before we move on. You might be thinking, Vish, you told us that these arterioles dilate and allow blood into the vascular chambers. Well, what's to stop the penis from sort of filling up indefinitely? And we actually have, if you look at these yellow circles here, the three of them, they surround our vascular chambers and they sort of prevent them from over expanding. And these wrappings are called the tunica albuginea. And they're just sort of a supportive structural tissue. Okay, let's just clear off some of this stuff and move on to the second phase, which is ejaculation. So we'll start with a definition. What is ejaculation? Ejaculation is the discharge of semen from the penis. And you normally discharge about three to five milliliters per ejaculation. And in that three to five milliliters, you actually pack about 300 million sperm. And ejaculation happens when basically a critical level of sexual excitement has been reached. So sexual stimulation actually causes nerves in the penis to send chemical signals to the spinal cord and brain. And then basically the brain and the spinal cord send messages back to the penis to cause ejaculation. And there's two phases to ejaculation in itself. So we'll start with our erect penis here because now we're sexually excited. And remember, now that we're erect, we've filled these vascular chambers here with blood. So the first part is sympathetic nervous system stimulated. Remember, in red, we drew these neurons as sympathetic nervous system neurons, and they're going to release norepinephrine, which I'll abbreviate as NE. 
onto all of the following structures. The epididymis, the vas deferens, the accessory glands, and the ejaculatory duct, which is here sitting inside the prostate gland. And so to respond to that norepinephrine, these structures that I mentioned here actually contract and emit semen into the beginning part of the urethra. Now in the second phase, the semen is now sitting here at the beginning part of the urethra. And the smooth muscle of the urethra itself, all along its length, and this muscle at the base of the penis, called the bulbospongiosum muscle, they then contract and sort of expel the semen from the urethra out of the tip of the urethra called the meatus. And that's basically the process of ejaculation. Now all of these muscular contractions are associated with a feeling of extreme pleasure. And actually, you also get full body physiological changes. For example, you see a decrease in heart rate and blood pressure after ejaculation. And in sum, the process of ejaculation and the whole body physiological changes is called an orgasm.